The heat sink fell off the hash board while it was in the miner? Hey there, welcome back to the channel. I'm Brian and uh, on this channel, we try to fix S17 hash boards. Eventually, one of these days, I'll get into the S19 series. But for now, everything's about the S17 series. And today, really, the heatsink fell off the hash board when I pulled this board out of the miner. So I can do the cool thing and, and just like just show you the fixes, right? And never show you the mistakes. But if I did that, I wouldn't be true to myself or the channel. So today we're going to talk about board 005. This board has been on this bench so many times, but today I'm going to show you my epic failure. So when I took the board out of the miner, this center heatsink literally fell on the floor. Thankfully, the way it fell, none of the uh, none of the fins got bent. The reason why it fell is because all of the nuts that were there are eight nuts that hold it on. All eight nuts, the solder joints failed. Then I started unscrewing the rest of the heat sinks to get them off. And what we see is this entire row of nuts failed. We had a failure here. Okay, obviously I, I knew these two failed because that was the center heat sink. But then... <laughs> One, two, three nuts fell there, four nuts there, five nuts there, six nuts, seven nuts. I mean, all of the nuts, well, the majority of the nuts fell off. There's 28 nuts on a board, and right now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I lost 20 nuts off of this board. So for those of you who have contacted me and said, hey, would you install my heat sinks? Hope this explains to you why I don't yet do that service. Because I could not, I definitely couldn't warranty this if I have problems like this. Now, good news is this was the old way of doing it. What do I mean by that? Let me get under the microscope and I'll show you. So if I zoom in, you can see that uh, the solder didn't really get activated, right? It didn't get hot and it didn't really flow like it was supposed to. So, uh, that's part of the problem. So, I'm going to do, this was the old way of doing this before I had some suggestions of, of cleaning off the, the board, taking the solder mask off, and then soldering them back home. That's how I've been doing it, and most of the time that works really, really well. Because 20 of 28 nuts fell off, there's no sense in keeping the other eight. So I'm going to go ahead and, and desolder these eight nuts, put them off to the side. I'm going to clean up all the pads, and then uh, we'll get this put back together. Okay, so the nuts have all been moved off. And some of them, like this one right here, you, you can see that that is a, <laughs> that had plenty of solder on it. Yeah, but others were really weak, so you know it's a good thing I took them off. Now, to make it easy... I've got this uh, guide. It's made out of a, uh, feels like some kind of fibrous uh, material, so it can take a lot of heat. And with that, I know where to put the, the nuts. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna mark it. Okay, now that they're marked, take that off, get that out of the way for now. I wanna use my desolder station and I'm just going to uh, clean them up. Okay, so the uh, board is cleaned off, and I wanted to show you this. I've been looking for a hot plate. The problem is I can't find a, a good hot plate at an affordable price that uh, is even. Because you can get the cheap ones, and they're really great for the center of the hot plate, but then the rest of the the thing is like 20, 30 degrees cooler. This is a Zeftronics Airbath ZT1. Now, it's not really fancy. I mean, it's got uh, a warm and a cool on-off switch. And it's got a switch on the back that said 
it says 100 C or 150 C. Well, let me tell you, when I put this thing underneath the board and I set the board, I made a little, I used my little jig that I use for soldering sometime. I just set it above, let me see, I'll do it like this. So this is kind of what it looked like, right? But obviously I didn't have it turned on the side. I just had it like this and I was able to do like two or three rows of desoldering at one time. And when I did that, I mean, it, it, that, that uh, desoldering iron just cut through that solder like butter. So, uh, if you don't have a, a hot plate and you're looking for a hot plate, uh, you might want to give the air bath a try uh, if you can find it cheap. Like on Amazon, I'm sorry, on eBay for less than 100 bucks, It's probably a good deal as long as it works. All right, so for this next part, I'm just going to be using a, a, just a little USB-powered grinder uh, with a tip. Now, this particular model I got off of, well, there you go. You can go Google for it. Not everything I've bought there is great, so, uh, eh. This works pretty good. I, I cannot complain about this. The tips uh, seem to hold up well, and it recharges fast. Uh, but I've tried to get uh, replacements, uh, tips from Amazon, and I can't seem to get the right ones. So you can find this on Amazon it just without that little tag there. Uh, but uh, yeah, look on Amazon, less than 40 bucks, like 30 bucks even. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back through all these spots where I, uh, where I took the solder off, and I'm going to take the solder mask off. If you don't have one of these, you could do it with an X-Acto knife, uh, just taking your time. I'm going to go under the microscope so I can show you this. So here's one that I, I, that I had previously done uh, on a previous repair, right, because the nut fell off. And, and as you can see, it, it's mostly cleaned off. Now, a better example of this, now this would be a much better example of what I'm talking about, but even this, I want to go further. I want to get rid of this little bit right here. I don't want any solder mask left where the nut is going to touch. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to sit there and I'm going to kind of grind it. Now be careful. You don't want to go, you don't want to dig too deep because you are getting into the copper. Now we're going to put solder back across there so it'll strengthen it and give it a more current carrying capacity. But still, don't go deeper than you absolutely have to. Clean that off a bit. And then I will come back and tin all these pads up with uh, leaded solder. And that way it'll be ready to take the nuts. there we go you can kind of see pardon the glare off the board that's uh that's the microscope trying to to so i can see everything but i've got my soldering iron here within reach i've got my my zeftronics zt1 air bath underneath got my little makeshift uh holder to keep the board up and i'm just letting the board kind of get nice and toasty um these far, the far ones here are probably the hardest on the edge, but I got it. We're good. All right. I got plenty of flux. Um, so let's get to it, right? Okay. A little bit of flux. A little bit of solder wire. So 
Just like that. I just want to get it nice and tinned. Okay, we'll move to the next one. Kind of a quick little note. I've been using Amtec Flux. Now, I've been using it for several videos. Uh, before that, I was using this MG Chemicals uh, No Clean Flux. Uh, I think it's 8341. I even tried refilling it. Um, don't waste your time. But I switched over to Amtec. Now, I, I can't tell you exactly when I switched over because the first Amtec I bought, Amtec uh, 559 V2, at least I believe it was V2, uh, I got from a fellow YouTuber. I bought it off his store. He didn't, send, he didn't give it to me for free. And uh, he sent it to me in an unmarked um, syringe like this. And uh, made a big stink about the fact that he... he had real Amtec Flux. Okay. Well, another YouTuber that uh, has been around a few years on YouTube and uh, is always talking about right to repair. And he sells Amtec Flux. And his Amtec Flux shows up like this. It's got a manufacturer date. It's got an expiration date. It has Amtec's name on it. It has the website. It has everything. It has markings. The first guide, no markings. When I started using this, my solder flowed better. So I'm not saying that this is fake. I'm not saying the first guy is fake. I'm just saying that this stuff flows better. I'm a big fan now of Amtec Flux. I don't have a, an affiliate link, but uh, if you if you want to go to uh, Rossman's store you can you can find it there right definitely worthwhile and what I do is I get these 30 cc units I then I have a 10 cc and I use um, oh man I forget what these are called I'll, I'll look it up and I'll I'll put the text as to what it's called anyway you you basically you you hook the two together and you you shoot from the big one to the little one while I'm letting the board cool off some more uh, we'll work on we'll work on retinning all 28 nuts. That's always fun. Let me show you how that works. So this is my chip clamp. Normally I use this for clamping down a chip and cleaning it up, but it also makes a great uh, surface to work on whenever you're retinning or tinning these little solder nuts. So this one obviously has solder on it already. Um, normally. You get these and they don't have solder, but these have been previously installed. So I'm gonna just freshen up the solder on them and get things ready for uh, remounting. Now, the problem is I have this little bitty tip. Now let's see what this little tip looks like when we put heat to it. Doesn't do bad. But for this, I want more heat. So let me swap out the tip real quick. I'm going back to the big number four, right? So it's it's the it's the big one. I'm running in at 381C, so not as plenty of heat. In fact, I could turn for this part, I could easily turn it up to uh, 400. And the other thing is, I've got some, I've got a, a tub of flux right next to me. Now that is the MG8341, uh, and for this, it works just fine. What I want to do is I just want to clean them, right? I just want to push that solder around and really get it smoothed out. Don't worry if you cover up the holes. I'm going to chase my holes. I'm going to chase these with a, with a tap. So I don't worry if I get a little bit going over the part like that. All right, so I keep this, this tap handy. So I just chuck it up in my, my drill and uh, I keep a pair of handy dandy pliers nearby and uh, I just run the threads. For most of them it's real easy. You can spin them on, it's just fine and dandy. But for those that need a little bit, just like that, here I'll put it there we go. Oops. All right, 
so it looks like I've got uh, my board. I've got my guide. And I've got my got my nuts all ready to go. Everything's tinned up. Everything's lined up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the the air bath back on to my little stand and then I'll be then I'll go ahead and I'll drop these in and and uh, solder these nuts right back on. And the nice thing is because I'll be using the guide, everything will be lined up nice and nice and straight. So I'm halfway through soldering uh, and I realized that I wasn't actually recording. So let me do one here and show you how it works. I've got the jig, I've got the, got it pretend on the board. My nut, heating up my nut. Presto. Okay, so we've got uh, the board is dried off. I always just throw it on um, on my cooling fans here, and that really helps to get that alcohol off in a in a timely fashion. Took the time to go get some water while uh, while I was waiting for things to dry. So let's find out um, what we've got. Do we have 65 chips? Uh, because maybe we don't because since the heat sink fell off maybe we've got some chip damage let's find out what we have okay okay we got something somewhere let me show you this. I think this might help us because we're just jumping all over, right? We got 57. So if we look, we had a lot of problems at 18.6 volts. This was the last time I ran this. Um, looks like it was June 2nd. And you notice from 51 on, we've got issues. Now I've already reflowed domains 1, 2, 3, I'm sorry, 1, 3, 4, 5, 8, 11, and 12. So I've already reflowed these two domains where we've got problems. Um, but we got problems right in there. Now that is not related to the heat sink because the heat sink was in this middle uh, block, those chains, that's where it fell off. So this was a pre existing condition. So let's see what we can do here. Hey, Brian here from the editing room. Yeah, this is my editing room. Sure. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to stop the video at this point because there's another five and a half hours of video footage of me getting into a mess of trouble. And even then, there's no completion. So I wanted to go ahead and get this part of the video out. And by now, what I've done is I've successfully mounted all of the nuts, right? All 28 nuts are well mounted. You could take the instructions that I've done so far. You could do that yourself with your kit and screw the heat sinks back on and get your, your board back in the miner. So I wanted to stop here, say thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you like this kind of content, please be sure to smash that like button. If you haven't done so already, give the video a subscribe so you get notified the next time I put out a video. And uh, while you're at it, check out some of these other videos uh, on the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to look for part two of the uh, board 005 heat sink uh, fall off. It's got to be a better name for the video. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you real soon.